Hello everybody, it is Online is Brony Time, and welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Yes, that's right, we are here, we are going to continue our trial, and we're kind of getting to the end road of this Mr. Stickler character and his testimony. Um, I think it's going to be interesting what he testifies, what we're going to learn about uh, this witness. Um, but yeah, um, my suspicion is that this guy is a panty snatcher because Trucy said she saw the person who stole her panties run into there. So I think, I think that's, I don't think he actually did it. Um, but, uh, he definitely is, could be guilty of the panty snatching. That night, yes, I went to the supermarket. I must have dropped my cell phone on my way back. And when I was walking through the park, I happened to witness the crime. I saw the killer, the victim, the stand, all as clear as day. It was him. I saw the defendant at the scene. Yes, but your cell phone was lying in a garage. Ah, yes, well, as you can see, my model of cell phone has defect. It is given to rolling. It's quite a pain when I drop it alongside the road, you know. Looks like a normal cell phone to me. In any case, Mr. Justice, the cross-examination, please. That's funny. The bracelet didn't react at all during that testimony. His nervous habit must not be acting up. Didn't sense anything either, actually. Looks like you're on your own this time around. Right, no problem. I hope here comes justice. Okie dokie, buddy. Show me that forced statement. I saw the killer, the victim, the stand all as clear as day. Okay, buddy. This part of the testimony is the key. I know it. Should I press him about the killer, the victim, or the noodle stand? I want to know about the noodle stand. Do you happen to remember the noodle stand? Quite well, yes. For a student of science, his keen observation and healthy curiosity are vital. I remember everything. I could even read the sign. I believe it said, uh, Noodle. Yes, that was it. For remembering something quite well, it sure took you a while to tell us. Thank you for telling us that a noodle stand sells noodles. Very enlightening. Oh, Mr. Justice? Hmm, what about that sign? Could that be important? Well, yeah, because it didn't say noodle. So the sign on the noodle stand said noodle. It appears the defense has just obtained a vital piece of testimony. Is the noodle stand's broth really that delicious? I'll have to go sample the wares one of these days. I think that's worth adding to the testimony as well. Hmm. Whatever sort of noodles that sends sells, it can't match up to IVU's cafeteria. Some apply to the school merely for the taste of our smart noodles. I wouldn't mind a taste of that myself. Well, buddy, I'm sorry to say, but I know for a fact that stand did not say noodle. That stand says Eldoon, buddy. Objection! And you're absolutely sure the sign read noodle. Why, just last week, my professor offered me this praise. At last, you have good eyesight. At least you have good eyesight, Stickler. I'll give you that. It read, without a doubt, noodle. I see. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is that pretty I see in your eyes? Let's take a look at our map, shall we? So you're claiming to me that when you saw the sign you were standing... Here, was it? Although it would have been a bit hard to read the sign from this spot. Y y you think so? Mr. Stickler, I'd like you to please take another look at the stand and to carefully read what the sign says. See, the sign actually states the name of the stand's owner. El Dunes. El, 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 inconceivable! I'm certain it was definitely Noodle for sure! Positive! I'm afraid your professor was wrong about that eyesight. Don't be so quick to jump to that conclusion. The sign he saw changes everything. The witness says the sign said Noodle. Oh, did he see it right? That might be the answer. 
What would you say if I told you that there is one spot from which the sign could be read the way Mr. Sickler claims? What? Mr. Justice, show us this spot! This is actually standing from this location. Hmm, just above the stand here. Probably right here. The witness was standing here, on the opposite side. How, how do you know that? When viewed from the south, the sign on the stand reads El Dunes, as we know. But that's from left to right. The other side, it might be right to left. So if you read it from right, left to right, it would look like it said Noodle. However... Observe the other side of the stand. Oh, it... Oh! No, it literally just says Noodle. Oh, no. No, it does say El Dunes, does it? No. No, that says Noodle. Oh, this side says Noodle. Exactly. The name of the stand is split between the front and back sides. I have a habit is... I know it's right, but I always get, like, the little details wrong. Like, I knew this was the answer. I thought... But my, my thinking was that, like... It's Eldoons from right to left instead, but I, I guess it is, but... I'm stupid, guys. Don't listen to me. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court. You witnessed the crime from the northern side of the park, not the south. Yeah, you got me! So what? So what? What does it matter if he saw the killing from the north or the south side? It makes no difference at all. He's right. Travel far enough to the south and you will end up going north. Viewed on a global scale, directions are utterly without meaning. Actually, maybe he's right. What does it change? It changes everything, Apollo. Trucy, remember his testimony from before? Though, to be honest, I'm a little scared of where this is leading. The killer and the victim are facing each other here. Then, at the moment, the killer raises his weapon. Mr. Stickler shouts. At which point, the victim turns his head to look. And the killer fires his pistol. That's why the bullet hit him in the right temple. No contradictions, right? Right. But if Mr. Stickler was standing on the north side of the park... That reverses the whole scenario. Completely. If Mr. Stickler shouts from where he is now, and the victim looks in his direction... The bullet would have to hit his left temple. Ah, ah! In other words, someone standing at point K couldn't shoot the victim in his right temple. It's impossible. That's right! So now that we know that Mr. Sickler was standing on the northern side, the wound location takes on an entirely different meaning. Indeed, you are absolutely correct, Fraulein. Well, what meaning? The entry wound was on the right side of the victim's head, correct? Well, the right side of the victim's head is north. North? Oh! Well, that's where the witness was. The stickler was standing. Correct. So if he was standing to the north, and the only person here who could have shot him to Temple was Mr. Stickler himself. Yeah! Order, order, order. Wow, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. She's put this whole case on its head while I was still figuring it out. Clarify one point for me, if you would, air forehead. What now? Are you truly accusing this college student of murder? Well, I can't say he exactly looks innocent, but something still doesn't feel right. I just can't picture him as the real killer. 
No, please, look so side. I'm a really nice guy. All my friends say so. Let's hear what the defense has to say. I'm going to do not justice. Should I really accuse Mr. Sickler? Uh, uh, accuse him of another crime. Because he definitely didn't kill him. I don't think Wesley Stickler is a killer, but he's not innocent either. His usual science tells me that much. Mr. Stickler, you seem unusually quiet. Tell us why, now. The, the word confession isn't in my dictionary. Air forehead. I'm afraid it falls to you to ludicate Air Stickler's silence. Mr. Justice, you did say you were accusing the witness just now. For a crime other than murder, your reason, the court's all ears. God, I know he's guilty of something, but what crime other than murder is there? If my evidence that shows his involvement in some other crime? Your evidence, the court's all eyes, Mr. Justice. Show us evidence that point to the witness's involvement in the crime. He's the fucking panty thief. The evidence is this. What is that? Woman's underwear? Hey, those are mine! We're about to get a breakdown here. Don't look at me like that! Order, order, order! Mr. Stickler! Well, I can't say this comes as a shock. It's not what it seems. My perfect gorilla's theorem, I swear it. On the night of the murder, just past 9 p.m., a young girl catches a panty snatcher red-handed. Bravely, she gives chase, but the snatcher flees and hides himself in no other place than the Maractus Clinic garage. Aha! Incidentally, these panties were found in the exact exhaust pipe of the car there. Presumably, he was trying to hide the evidence of his crime. Ergo, while you may not be a murderer, you are guilty of panty snatching in the first degree. Please hear me out! That's not what it looks like! Order, order, order! Mr. Stickler, you should be ashamed! It's not what it... Seems! <sighs> so are we to understand that you were silent not because you were guilty of murder, but because you lacked the courage to admit your theft of this girl's undercomments? Um, perhaps you're not aware that my school's name was originally written IV. I stands for intelligent, V stands for valiant, C. Your point. I'm not done. I'm a major in the science department. And what does science teach of not curiosity? Yes, we of the Ivy use science puppet are valiantly curious. No challenge is too daunting, and what greater challenge than science is a mystery? Come on, you're talking about a girl's panties here. No, you do not understand. A mystery is the unknown, and the unknown is unacceptable. And my friends, when it comes to mysteries, those panties are the promised land. From the moment I first laid eyes on them, I was compelled to investigate. For science, a full-size car tire was only the first mystery those patties revealed. A tire? Yes, I saw her do it. She pulled a tire out of those panties. But that's not all. First there was a tire, then a stew pot, and a frozen chicken. One mystery after another it was. It was magic. Oh, I remember now. He's one of the regulars in the audience at the Wonder Bar. Huh? He's talking about my magic panties trick. I just don't understand. A broom from a pair of panties, it mocks the very laws of physics. A broom and a frozen chicken, Trucy? Whatever happened to doves and bunny rabbits? Mr. Stickler, you stole this girl's panties to understand a magic trick? You say panties, but they are so much more than that. For me, they are an object for serious study. I wonder, there has been a recent rash of panty snatching in the area. Were they all you? I am sorry, but I did it for science! 
Each time I spied a pair of panties flapping in the breeze, maybe this will be the pair that will loot to keep the mystery. Even that night as she chased me through the streets, I wept tears of joy. Perhaps this is the night that I will seize the truth that lies within those panties. Yet woe was I, for once again the lazy heart panted truth slipped through my fingers again. Still, that leaves one thing unexplained. Ah, you refer to a witness's other lie, yes? The witness claimed he saw the crime from the south, but was in fact in the north. Indeed. Anyone would care to explain why he lied about that? Be my guest, Air Forehead. Me? Did I not hear you correctly? Did you not say you do not accuse the witness of murder? Why then did the witness lie about his location at the time of the shooting? Or have you no idea? Apollo, there's something about the way the diagram is arranged right now. When you think about it right near where Mr. Stickler was standing, isn't there a... Well, Mr. Justice, what say you? Do you have any evidence for the witness lie... That the, why the witness lied about his location? Found in the trash can at People Park distinctive bloomers to say the least I think I think it's because if he said where he really was like then these bloomers would possibly have been found if he did when we investigated maybe that's why the evidence that shows why he lied is this watch more patches how many panties are you carrying in your pocket there, forehead? These are the last. Honest! These were found in a trash can at the park. Looking at the diagram, we can see that the trash can was right next to where the witness stood. Mr. Stickler, you didn't... Alas, I'm a failure as a scientist. I can't unravel the mysteries of the universe. I can't even unravel a pair of panties. These panties are your handiwork as well. That night, I had been chased, hunt, hounded into the Maractus Clinic garage. Weeping in frustration, I was forced to abandon my prize. Don't you see how I felt? Believe me, I'd rather not. I hid in the garage for a short while. Then, abandoning the panties, I made for home. To avoid the office when the girl works, I went towards the south entrance. When I saw them hanging there on the clothesline by a giant mansion. A giant pair of panties. Apparently he didn't know those bloomers belonged to the mob. I had them safe in my pocket, ready to take home, when I stumbled upon a murder. The murder of Dr. Maractus. I reported what I had seen, but as I waited for the police to arrive, I got scared. What if they searched me? That's when you disposed of the bloomers. Yes, it was a severe blow to the progress of science, but one that had to be born. A fascinating if disturbing tale. I believe this brings today's proceedings to a close, and I'm more than pleased to dismiss this witness for the remainder of the trial. One last thing, if I might. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin. Regardless of where we ended today, some vital points were made. Namely, that the defendant, Waki Kotaki, was at the scene of the crime, and he was pointing a weapon at the victim. One more thing. Waki Kotaki has a clear motive. Indeed, the defendant, Waki Kotaki, is still the prime suspect in this case. The only suspect, in fact, assuming there was no one else on the scene at the time. And a mystery remains. The location of the wound in the victim's right temple has yet to be explained. The court requests further investigation for both the defense and prosecution. Ja, baby! No problem. Very well, this brings the trial for the day to a close. Court is adjourned. Booyah! We got the panty snatcher. 
And now, of course, as always with other cases, we usually have three days max, I think, or one, there's usually one trial, investigation, a trial, investigation, and then the final trial. What a train wreck that was. Glad we made it out of that trial alive. Really? I had fun. And Walkie made it through the day, too. Everyone was too obsessed with panties to bother with the real case. But it was good publicity. Imagine the crowd at my show tonight. You should come, Polly. Yeah. The amazing Mr. Hat will be making an appearance. Hi, folks. Be here all week. That's about enough of him. Hello. Ah, Miss Tiala. Thank you for today. The trial went well. Oh, right. No problem. Do you think Walkie will be okay? Well, he's not guilty yet. Please, you have to help him. We're supposed to get married next month. Oh, congratulations. God, way to put the pressure on a guy. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Are you sure about marrying into the Kotaki family? I'm fine with it, and I love Waki with all my heart. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. So it doesn't bother you that you'll be, um, married to the mom? I don't think so. My parents are against it, of course. Say, where did you and Waki first meet, anyway? Good question. Miss, T Miss Tiala doesn't look like the type to have gangster connections. Oh, we met at my old job, actually. Ah, office romance! She's not very forthcoming with information about herself, is she? Did you know that the boss is trying to get out of the business? Really? Mr. Kotaki wants to quit being a gangster? He's trying to transfer his assets into a normal company. He only announced it recently, out of the blue. I hear there's quite a lot of confusion in the ranks. Hmm, wonder if this explains that apron. Can't imagine Walkie going along with that. <laughs> He's highly motivated, isn't he? Um, that's not the word I would have used. He said, I'll be the next big boss and keep the family alive. I think he's at that age when boys want to make a mark on the world. That's not the way I would have put it. His father moves in a lot of circles. He's really focused on profits. The Kotaki family's been making a killing recently. Again, not the way I would have put it. But Waki says it's not about the money. They have the gangster tradition of old. Oh, a generation gap. They've even got the ever-classic what about the family business thing going. Usually it's the father worried about tradition. Can I ask you a question about Waki? I understand he was operated on by the victim, Dr. Maraptis. Apparently, yes. I was in his clinic about half a year ago. He messed up my up something bad. And then he just lets me go without a word. See you later. Bye. So I gotta go in, get another doc to patch me up again. Yes, it sounded horrible. Waki has always been fond of fighting, I'm afraid. I'm not sure it qualifies as fighting when pistols are involved. Mr. Gavin was saying his life might be in danger, wasn't he? N no, that can't be right. I'm sure he was just trying to scare us. Scary to think that a surgeon might make a mistake. But it's even scarier when he tries to hide it. I'd like to know a little more about this operation. Maybe it's time to pay the Ractus Clinic a visit. I should be getting home now. Walkie's in your hands, Mr. Justice. Right. L leave it to me. Apollo, I think you're the only one making her more nervous. Sorry, I'm new at this, okay? T, it's all right. I believe in you. I mean, <laughs> you did just buy him some time, so... You have some skill. Hmm... Oh, hey! Isn't that Charlie? It's Charlie, the houseplant. They've had it for years, apparently. That's Mr. Charlie to you. He's been here longer, after all. Right, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Charlie. I'm sorry, Mr. Charlie. He was raised by a tribe of heathens. She's saying something to the plant as she waters it. Mr. Charlie forgives you, this time. Is there anything else I might do to please his high leafiness? Uh, 
Anyway, I think we gotta go, uh... Uh, we're... Uh, sorry. Okay, yeah. No, turn on a playoff, turn on a playoff. Hit the wrong button again. Hmm, looks like Walkie's out for questioning. I really need to talk to him. I guess we'll come back later. Excuse me. Yes? The other suspect is all through with questioning, sir. The other? Ah! You mean the panty snatcher? Wesley Stickler. So they arrested him, too. Alright, let's have a little chat with Mr. Stickler. I hope I don't regret this. He is a valuable witness. He is a bit precious. I'll give him that. Please keep this brief, if you would. I'm quite busy. I need to finish this paper. Yeah, it's you! Mr. Stickler, we'd like to have a few words with you. Very well, as long as they're few. Nothing would make me happier, believe me. Mr. Stickler, on the night of the murder, you stole... Wait, I can't help but feel that I'm being misunderstood. How exactly? Yes, that night I obtained a pair of panties, it's true. However, it was my burning curiosity that drove me to do it. Nothing more! You want to know the trick to my panties, right? You're here too! Oh, great Trucy, teach me! Ah! I must know the secret of your panties! My very existence hangs in the balance! Please make me your apprentice! Apollo, help! I don't know. I think you'd make a great, lovely assistant. Don't say that, Apollo. Could you relate? Could you relate what you saw the night of the murder to us one more time? Why not? That would hardly differ from the testimony I gave in court. The defendant was there in the park that night. Of this, I'm quite certain. He was pointing a pistol or something like that at the victim. That's when I shouted, "Stop, you two! Let's resolve this like gentlemen." And the next moment, a shot was fired. And this is all true. Oh, sorry. And this is all true. Really? My panties are gone. My innermost heart revealed. What for the reason could I possibly have to lie? Can't think of anything you want to hide more than panty snatching, true? Sounds like Walkie was at the scene of the crime after all. Oh, I wish it weren't so. Yikes, she's back. Hey, you two. Over here. Uh, uh, us? Yo, Little Plum, what's up? I think all these ganks Therese is a negative influence on Trucy. I heard you retrieved my bloomers. Well, I was just doing... Bah! A man speaks clearly and takes credit where it's due. You caught the thief, didn't you? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, I caught it. You're cute when you're nervous, Polly. I'll deal with you later. But enough about bloomers. What about my son, Walkie? Walkie? Oh, uh, well, he's, um, clearly... I yes, ma'am? This is why I was kind of hoping we could avoid coming back here. He's really everything you'd expect in a boss's son. I'm gonna be a gangster, dude. The life does have an appeal for that age, particularly for boys. What? Don't look at me like that. He was shot in a turf war about half a year ago. Yes, we heard the story from Walkie. But he didn't tell you the whole story. You know, even if he had a pistol then, he couldn't have shot anyone. What? He acts like he's hard, but he couldn't shoot someone to save his life. I should know. I'm his mom. Birds do have a certain weight to them. Hopefully when this is all taken care of, he and the boss can sort out their differences. The boss? The boss? You mean Walkie's father? They didn't seem to be on the best terms, did they? It's true. One of our pistols is missing. So the murder weapon was from this mansion. I kind of figured, given the difficulty of obtaining a gun these days. 
None of the rank and file have access. Only the boss, myself, and Walkie could have taken it. I see. I'm sure the cops will continue trumping all over the mansion because of this case. Maybe this is a sign that it's time for a change. Whoa! <laughs> she doesn't seem too concerned, at least. Yeah, Walkie's fiance. Wait, who said that? Yeah, Walkie's fiance. Getting married next month, correct? I suppose she's been staying over lately. You don't look too happy about that, little plum. How'd you guess? Even I could tell that. Could you tell us more about her? Walkie brought her home one day. Says she wants to tie the knot. I can see why. She's so pretty. Oh, she's pretty enough, but you know. Nah, it's probably just me being suspicious. Stay in this business too long, and you start to only see darkness in people. You get a nose for it. A nose for people. A nose for trouble. Hmm, I wonder what the problem is. It's like a gangster's only version of female intuition. The boss may act tough. But that boy means the world to him. Rocky seems, well, it seems like he's against his father's position. Ah, uh, it's to be expected. We're in a bit of a transition now. I'm trying to cut our ties to the shadier side of the street and do, remove, do more on the up and up. Rocky isn't too enthusiastic about the change, it's true. But why the change? Is the gangster thing just not paying the bills? <laughs> it pays, but we need a lot of money right now. Clean money, that is. I see. Hmm, something must be up. You'll see things the way the boss sees them someday. Alright, so we learned a little bit there about, you know, what's going on between Makina's father and that family. Now, is Tiala the real murderer? Is that what's happening here? Is that what we're going towards? I mean, I think it very well could be what we're going towards. Trash can, this is where he found the mirror. Come to think of it, wasn't there something else in here? Something near the bottom. Look at the paint on these, that means... These must have ended up in here after Mr. Wright's accident. Maybe they're connected, let's pick them up. Hmm, do those slippers belong to Talia? Or Tiala, as it was so case. I'm thinking Tiala might be the killer here. Or maybe not, and I'm just being suspicious, and it's... So, I guess, uh... I'm trying to think of who it could be, but I guess we just haven't, we might not have met him yet. Hey, it's Mr. Odoon! Oh, Mr. Odoon! Hmm. What's wrong? So, you found my stand. <laughs> Excuse me? That's why I'm here, to thank you. Ah, but now it's a crime scene and they won't let me have it back! That's also why I'm here. I got no other place to go. Ah, I see. How can a noodle stand be a crime scene? That's what I don't get, Trucy at all! Even in death, he's after my neck, I tell you. Bah! Can't even cook an honest noodle. He? Even in death, you mean the victim, Dr. Maractus? I tell you, it's enough to drive a man to make his soup even saltier. Remind me never to eat his noodles when he's in a bad mood. Hmm, pan left. Well, we've got to check out this clinic. That's for sure. Yeah, but what about that guard? No harm in asking. Um, excuse me. Hey, it's you two from yesterday. That's the same officer that was standing out by the park yesterday. Your business is over in the park, isn't it? The clinic's off limits. It's not involved. But, but, what part of off limits do you not understand? Show me proof that the clinic, clinic is connected to the incident in the park or beat it. No harm in asking. No gain either. No point in sticking around here, I guess. That stand. For generations, it served up the very best noodles us dudes could make. A tradition of noodles and salty broth. 
It's more than a stand. It's history, I tell you. It's what you say. Watch what you say or it might become true. That's a great story, Mr. Eldoon. A single stand passed down from generation to generation. Of course. To be honest, I don't plan on doing it. That's right. You said something about that. About you rebelling against your pops, was it? Good memory, Trucy Doll. I, I was a go-getter back in my day. Till my friend next door put it in. In the end, I was left with nothing but this dusty old stand to earn my fortune. Mr. Aldoon, I don't mean to pry. But what exactly did you do before you became a chef? Bah, let old noodles lie, that's what I say. Starting to get an idea of what he did anyway. He stole my dreams and left me with nothing but noodles. And I don't even have that! I'm guessing this doctor, um, is the reason why. Mr. Aldoon, if I might ask, what exactly happened between you and the Maractus Clinic? Eh? Eh? I couldn't help but sense enmity there. En enmity? I hate him. Er, hated him, acting like he smells like roses when he's rolling in the mud. Excuse me? He's the only doctor at that clinic. You know, pretty impressive, eh? I'll tell you the secret to his success. The mob. You mean the Kataki family? They're always having one of them turf wars or whatnot. Always an injury or two that needs fixing. Rakta saw a chance for some business. So he started giving the Kataki family a good deal. A deal? Every fifth operation for free. He stole the idea from my pops. One free bowl of noodles a week, he used to say. Can a doctor just decide to do that? What about the insurance companies? Oh, no doubt it's illegal. But it got him in good with the family. Pretty soon he was getting all the business in town. Even me here, in the dark. Up to my neck in soupy noodles. I think I figured out Mr. Aldoon's former occupation. Can't hurt to ask Apollo. Mr. Aldoon, or should I say Dr. Aldoon? Figured it out, did you? That's right, I was a doctor. Surgeon. Till the year before last. So Mr. Maractus was your rival. You like those onions they put in the soup broth? Um, yeah, kind of. You take a spoon, you drink some broth, those onions will find their way in there. For people who like them, why, that's just fine. For people who hate them, I hate onions. Hate them! Always sneaking in from the side, getting in the way of good tasting spoonful. Well, that's what he was, an onion. Onion boy, that's what I called him. So you weren't exactly friends. Ha! Me and Palmeractus? Ever since preschool, we were getting in each other's face. No matter what I did, sure enough, he kept following along. And he'd do it better than me, he'd just blow right past without so much as a how. I see. That's right, I was a surgeon law before he was, you know. Then the no good onion boy comes along. Well, Trucy, look, well, Trucy, looks like we found ourselves a new suspect. Don't say that. Thanks to him, I was forced to trade in my scalpel for a ladle. Sorry, pal. Didn't mean to weigh you down with an old man's ramblings. No, it's fine. By way of apology, you ever get yourself in a spot of trouble, you drop by. Huh? You're investigating Maractus, aren't you? Yes. Well, you want to know about a doctor, you ask a doctor. That's all I'm saying. You just think of me if you need something, Trucy doll. Right. Thanks, Mr. Eldoon. Hmm. I guess the time spent listening to him complain wasn't entirely wasted. I'd say so, yep. Um, I was hoping to meet with my client. Walkie well, Kataki's just finished question. I'll bring him out. Great, finally. Yo, sup, my little imposter? Hey, wh what did you call me? Dazam, it's you. Sorry, G. Thought you were Alita. My little imposter sure is a strange nickname. It's a clink thing. You wouldn't understand. 
Did I say a pasta? I meant poster. Like, poster girl, right? If you're going to drop part of that, why not drop poster and just call her girl? Because she's so much more than that. She, she's like, she's like an angel. A fallen angel. So what can I do you for? You don't look so chipper today, Blocky. Worried about your own heart condition, maybe? That was the wackest thing of all. All this G's lining up. Taking eye exams and all that. Better to die young than fade away, Bazoi. Oh, it's so here. Eh, what's a relief? Oh, did your father not tell you? Is that bullet you carry so close to your heart? If not attended to immediately, it could kill you. Man, I ain't trying to hear that. A man fights to protect what's valuable to him. You know what I'm saying? I miss my fallen angel. Hey, you go get a leader for me. You're my lawyer, aren't you? Lawyer, not gopher. So I hear you're to be married next month. Straight up, we poured the Nepital 40 out on the stock. Alita, oh, Snapple Cakes, she's so fine. Boing. I think he's spent with her in his own weird way. I was wondering, how did you two meet? I asked Tiala, but she was very vague. Oh, well, man, if she wouldn't tell you. I best hold my tongue, you feel me? What? Man, what's past is past. She knows that. When I'm with Alita, I feel like there's things worth protecting out there, you feel me? And my Alita, she's down with that all the way. Mm, so both of them are mum about their past. Do you think you could tell us what happened with you with you and Palmaractus? There's something you should know. We could talk these are having what we might you might call a feud with the Rivadas family. So about six months back, I got into Rivales turf. Rivales, isn't that, isn't that just rivals? But I, I don't know. I'm not gonna try to guess. I go into Rivales turf, packing a knife, right? And you were shot. Coldest thing I ever seen. One shot to the heart, but my homies weren't too late. It's a miracle that I lived. It's already considered one of the seven wonders of the Kentucky family. You know that. So, you were taken to the Maractus Clinic then. You should have seen their faces when they wheeled me in. You can't just let the boss's son die, you know? But I hate to have been in that doctor's shoes. Mr. Kotaki's scary enough when he's not angry. But the bullet that hit you... It was never removed. And it's still threatening his life. That doctor! He did it on purpose. The Revolvers paid him off. I'm sure of it. I need to hear more about the night of the murder, that much is clear. Life in the family is a G thing. It's about being a man. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm not up on my G things. I'm not even sure what a G thing is. But my old man, he's got salt. Says the old rival gang days are over. He just wants to make money. Is that a good thing? Man, there ain't no soul in making money. Better live fast and die young for shizzle. Wait till I run the yard, then everyone will know what time it is. That's right, OG time all the time. Represent. Paulo, why does he keep talking about old guys? I don't think that's what OG means, Trucy. Original gangster. Yeah, so tell us about your knife, dude. Oh yeah, have to do it this way. I always found that a little weird that we have to do it that way. Well, that, no, that's not what I wanted to do. About these weapons, the pistol and the knife. They belong to the family. I stuck them out that night. So the killer, Mr. Sickler, says he's saw that night was, I guess it was me. I was there, after all. God, we're finished. Um, yo, Walkie, do you think you could tell us exactly what happened that night? Heh, <laughs> you don't beat around the bush, do you? I like your style, shorty.
Um, actually, there's a question I've been wanting to ask you for a while now. That is, uh, did you do it? Did you shoot him? I don't know. Eh? The day of that checkup when I found out about the bullet by my heart. I borrowed a gun for the family stash. Figured I'd give that doctor a taste of his own bad medicine. Uh-oh, I don't like where this is going. But you were carrying a knife, weren't you? Oh, that? Yeah, well, never can be too careful, I say. So I'm on my way to the clinic, right? When I run into him in the park, and he's dragging his noodle stand behind him. Wait, you didn't put him up to that. Like, you know, in the movies? If you value your life, you'll bring the stand. Shortly, you're more whack than I am. Shorty, you're more whack than I am, and that's saying something. But I was serious. The thing is, I don't remember what happened next all too well. You don't remember? But the way I see it, if there wasn't anyone else there that night, then I guess it probably was me who did him in, you know what I'm saying? Hmm, interesting. the crowd over by the park. Probably people trying to get a glimpse of the crime scene. But why are those girls screaming? I think I just heard one say, Oh my god, it's him! Wait, that motorcycle. Ah, if it isn't air a forehead. Prosecutor Gavin. Some fans found me on my way out. Just my luck. Oh my god, oh my god, he's so cool! Thus the screams. New album just came out, you know? Try waving to them. They love it! Oh, 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 he's so cute! <laughs> They're so excited, it doesn't matter who waves to them, see? This is surreal. Um, so you were here investigating? And I was on my way home, when my hog gave up the ghost. Your hog? My motorcycle won't start. A clogged exhaust pipe. Too bad. It looks like such a nice bike, too. Hard to believe that it could break just from that. Ah, it's my fault. I think I was using the wrong oil. Cars, motorbikes, zero is the same. Clog the exhaust and they won't run. Ah, machines. Tell me you share my angst, air forehead. I heard a bicycle, actually. Ah, eh. In any event, I'm off to shop to get her fixed. The detective in charge of the scene isn't fond of me in any case. The detective? You mean the one in the lab coat? Ja, she's in a foul mood too. Be gentle. Auf Wiedersehen, baby. Oh my god, oh my god, there he goes! In the forecast for the bark today... Gloomy skies. Ha! Ha! Funny joke. Well, nothing new but head on in. Let's hit the park, Apollo. Huh? Does something about this scene look different to you? Blue tarps are gone. Maybe that's it? Yeah, I think you're right. Look over there. The white frock detective from yesterday, she seems to be apologizing... ...reveredly to the trash can. She's under a lot of stress. The investigation is probably not going well. Hey, you there! If you're going to talk about something behind someone behind their back, do it more quietly, please! Oh, Detective Sky, hello! You seem as gloomy as ever. This is miserable. Miserable. I just got a new kit and I can't get the stuff to work. Everyone's all smiles for that glimmerous fop. Glimmerous? Does she mean Prosecutor Gavin? More to the point, doesn't she mean glamorous? When he walks his shiny chains, catch the sun and glimmer in my eyes, it's distracting. Speaking of distracting... I guess I just have to set the fact that I lack talent. Sounds like she's trying out some sort of new forensics technique. 
Well, I think we better talk to her about what's going on next time on the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Not Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. So yeah, um, we found out a little more stuff today. Um, I'm beginning to suspect Tiala might be behind this. Or at least someone connected to her past. Because there's this whole thing about the past that they they won't tell anybody about. So I'm not sure where he met her. And that may be the reason she um, came to ask us for help. Is she was the one who killed him because he didn't you know, fix up Walkie, and he got arrested for it, and now she's trying to, you know, make it so uh, Apollo either frames somebody else, or just makes, convinces them that Walkie didn't do it. Um, but yeah, so, thank you all for watching. Please have a like, comment, and subscribe to Brony Time for more content, especially more of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Also, make sure to share this video far and wide so it can reach as many eyes as possible. And uh, I will see you guys in the next part.